Uh, so my name is Scott Smith, a senior product manager here at Nozomi. Um, I'm really excited about this one. So this is really helping customers get to that next step and providing them more value and being able to detect threats in their environment. So today we're going to go over the, the new Nozomi TI expansion pack, which is powered by Mandiant. So this is going to be able to help identify more threats, more rules, and we'll get into some detail. And I'll show a little demo of kind of the difference between what you'll be able to see in the standard um, Nozomi threat intelligence as well as with the Mandiant add-on. Um, so we'll kind of show that. And we do have a special guest today. So we have Teddy Powers from um, Google Mandiant. Um, that's going to talk a, a little bit as well during the presentation. So let's go ahead and get started. So um, just a, a quick agenda. Um, we'll go over just kind of our partnership with Google Mandiant. We'll go over the expansion packs. We'll go a demo. And then we'll talk about how you can trial if you have the, the Vantage platform or the Nozomi platform today. And then uh, we'll leave it open for Q&A. So we should have a lot of time for questions at the end. So um, please put them in the chat. If you want to wait until the end, um, that's perfectly acceptable as well. But we want to make sure that you understand it and get the value out of it. All right, um, oops. let's go over our kind of our partnership and how it's evolved with uh, FireEye Mandian and, and Google Mandian. So back in 2017, um, we've been working with FireEye to be able to help customers um, in their managed defense, being able to help them with the asset identification, as well as with those OT and our hybrid threat intelligence. So 2017, uh, we've partnered with them and we're part of their managed defense for OT. And since then it's evolved and grown. We've been able to work on different research projects together, be able to help out the industry with being able to collaborate on the Triton and being able to share information with SolarWinds um, research, be able to help customers out with that. So it's evolved drastically from 2017 with how we're interacting with the security research teams. Um, in 2020, we've um, started sharing information with um, threats and being able to see with what we are triggering on alerts and being able to see what we have with our honeypots and so forth in the OT aspect of it. And being able to share that with um, Mandiant and being able to have them help with some of our rules as well. And then in 2020, we worked with Mandiant to be able to help them with their incident response, being able to understand how customers or how when they a customer goes ahead and opens up an incident response, what data do they need? How can we help out Mandiant and the customer be able to get all the data to be able to have a quicker response? Um, then we've done some further integrations with um, the Chronicle integration or the Google security operations is what it's called now, been able to get that into the platform that you can have the sort and being able to have all the data in one central location for the Google platform. And then today, um, we are expanding that even further. So Nozomi has focused heavily on OT rules and around rules that pertain to our customers and oil and gas, pharmaceutical, manufacturing, transportation, smart cities, and so forth. We've been focused all of our research on that. But obviously, the industry is huge, right? It's a very large market. So what we're going to talk about today is how Mandiant is helping with providing us that threat intelligence as an add-on that we can add to our um, our existing Nozomi threat intelligence and be able to help customers um, be able to have more six rules, more information around threats, and be able to have that information around vulnerabilities that they can be able to take action on and have workarounds for. So this is a huge improvement that's going to provide more value to the customers, and Nozomi's curating that data and adding it into the platform. So 2017 through 2024, we've heavily worked with um, Mandiant to be able to provide a security platform within Nozomi, as well as helping out the industry um, around security threats. And this is the next step to that, which is definitely going to help out the, the platform, the Nozomi platform, and our existing customers. With that said, I would like to introduce Teddy Powers. Um, so Teddy is the Technical Alliance Senior Manager at Google Mandiant. And I want to pass it over to him to talk about our partnership and the relationship and how it's going to help out the community before we get into what it actually looks like. Teddy? 
Awesome. Thank you so much, Scott, and uh, appreciate everyone being on our webinar today. Um, really here to talk about just how excited we are. I, I think there was a conversation that I can't recall, Scott, whether or not you were involved in last week, but um, we were lucky to have Edgar, the CEO in the room of Nozomi, along with a couple of other Mandiant leaders. And, you know, call me crazy, but at some point, I think there's a chance that, you know, the size of the OT market might actually double the IT market. So at the end of the day, as you can see kind of here in this quote from Melissa, we really believe that this partnership allows Nozomi and Mandiant to work together on the convergence of OT and IT security, kind of supporting our managed defense for OT plays in the space that Nozomi helps oversee. And then we really think it is absolutely crucial to secure the critical infrastructure and do so utilizing threat intelligence that can help you identify those IT threats that find their way into the OT network. Excellent. Thank you, Teddy. All right, let's, let's get into it, right? Let's start talking and seeing what um, we can actually provide together to the customers. So, like I said, um, Mania is providing a subset of their threat intelligence. So that's sticks rules, that's information around the vulnerabilities, analysis, mapping for MITRE, that's first seen in the wild, last seen, some target industries. All of this data, we are enhancing our existing rules. So like I said, our Nozomi threat intelligence team has done amazing work. They've created millions of indicators out there that customers are using today. Um, heavily focused on the OT side, but we're still creating rules around the IT side and being able to see as threats come in from IT into OT, we're still monitoring those. But Mandian has a large and extensive history of tracking that we are going to utilize and be able to put into it. So we're going to curate the data. So it's just not taking a feed, throwing it into the Guardian and getting all the rules, right? It's we are going through and we are taking that data and we're parsing out and putting it into the UI as well so that you can be able to see value into it, being able to understand those threats and being able to see how the MITRE mapping is or the first scene in the wild so you can be more informed on it. You don't have to go do further research. We want to have you be able to have that inside the Nozomi platform. There's additional links that link back to Mandiant um, articles and blogs that you can be able to utilize, but we want to be able to have it all within the Nozomi platform so that you can be informed and have all the information in there to generate a report. So with that, there's an additional millions of indicators. So we're still parsing through it. We're getting new data daily from Mandiant. Um, right now, it looks like it's a, a few million additional indicators that we're going to use for um, very high confident indicators in it. Um, one of the good things is for existing customers on your sensors, your guardian sensors, this is only maybe a two to 3% increase of CPU and memory. So we can double the indicators. We can have around eight to 10 million indicators of compromise on those guardians with just a slight increase to performance. So you're getting a lot more indicators, being able to generate those alerts and threats and be able to identify those quickly, which is a small improvement or small impact of performance. There's other linking that we're doing that I'll show you kind of relates back to the threat cards, um, which is uh, a new offering that we have and and within standard for the Vantage platform, but it's helping us link back to those threat actors, being able to map them back to malware families and being able to see what industry they're targeting. So it's helping us out by creating a bigger platform for threat cards that you can visualize all of these new indicators and data within the platform. So a lot of this data is within Vantage. So with Vantage, you'll get the additional millions of IOCs, the million sticks indicators and so forth. You'll be able to enhance the threat cards. You'll be able to see more data around the vulnerabilities and you'll be able to have more workbooks and workarounds for that. For on-prem customers that do not have Vantage, you're still being able to get that value with those additional sticks indicators. So all those millions of indicators that um, Mandiant is providing and we're curating and adding into our existing rules, you're still going to get those. So that's still a huge value to be able to generate more alerts and be able to see that in there. So this is going to be for both Vantage and on-prem customers of Nozomi. 
obviously it's you're going to get more with vantage because of the the cpu and the tents and being able to take full advantage of the cloud and all the SaaS offering but on-prem customers are still going to get a lot with it those indicators are huge and they're going to get uh, a lot of value out of that so let's go ahead and, and take a look at this this is the vantage platform um this is if i go to the dashboard for some of those customers kind of have your, your normal dashboard here. If you go into the threat intelligence, we're gonna be focused on those threat cards because this is how we can visualize some of the indicators on those differences. It's kind of hard to say, here's all these million rules and kind of show you a full database of it and API calls for it. I wanted to visual, I wanted to, for you to be able to visualize this. So we'll use the threat cards on it. And I'll talk about some of the threat cards as well and throw that in there as well. So this is the standard threat cards without the Mandian add-on. So still be able to get see some of those threat cards however if we look at this apt 19 here we can see that there's 16 yara rules okay perfect we got some indicators we'll be able to generate alerts and be able to see that with our deep packet analysis we'll generate and see those threats but also mandiant has 10 additional rules that we can add to it so these are six rules that we can be able to have as part of the mandiant add-on so this is additional value for that so some of these well, our, like uh, this one here, APT41 has some different ones. We can see some that Mandiant is enhancing and how many rules. So APT41, there's 26 additional rules with that mapping, right? So grouping those threats together in that malware group and that threat group, we can map that together and we can see that, yeah, we got nine yard rules, six, um, 16, six indicators, and there's 26 additional um, six rules that we can add with the Mandiant add-on. If we go through and look at one of these, we can see we're getting some, we're getting some, um, we have a lot of good data that our Nozomi team is adding to it. So we have just a brief analysis of it. We have some industries here. We have some different aliases it's using first seen in the wild. We have some malware that um, is being mapped to it. We can also see that there's some additional information and alert rules for each of these malware um, groups that it can trigger on based on the Mandian add-on. And then we have your target country and references. So you'll be able to get some basic information just with our current Nozomi threat intelligence. However, if I go through and let's do kind of a share side by side here, if this is gonna work out in the webinar, we'll see how this looks. So if we go here and kind of group these together and we go into APT41, if we go through and start looking at APT41 here, Start searching before I was ready for it. I clicked off of it. So let's see. I didn't, oh, it just loaded after I clicked back on it. All right. So if we look at um, the data here, we see the analysis for it. And I'll search for APT41. and we'll go into more information so the analysis exact is the same so we have the analysis same descriptions in there um, however we have more target industries so this is more industries that mandiant has been tracking as part of their research and they've added into it so now we can see different target industries so in that search where i put in apt 41 you can now put in oil and gas or pharmaceutical which will be able to show that apt 41 because there's more mapping to it um, we can see that there's a lot more aliases and different names that they're using. So Main has been tracking and um, different names for that, that they can go ahead and add into it. So if you search for any of these other names, it's going to show up as APT41. So different countries, maybe you have a different um, IR company doing um, incident response or maybe MSSP or, or whatever it is, and they're using a different alias. If you search in there, Main is able to map those back and we're able to put those into the database as well as if we look at some of these target countries, if we look here, we have a lot less target countries in here. So zoom in on this one. So we can see that there's a lot less target countries in here. So there's a lot less mapping for those of what target they're, what industries they're targeting or what countries they're targeting. We're able to have a lot more of that mapping from the Mandian add-on. The MITRE ATT&CK framework, 
We have a lot of the same items in there for the MITRE ATT&CK framework. Um, there's a little bit more information on here for the different capabilities, if it's been able to identify some maybe compromised infrastructure for their um, resource development and so forth, we can be able to have that additional mapping. But the biggest thing is if we go down into the indicators, we still have those YAR rules that Nizomi is providing, right? Those nine YAR rules um, in both platforms. So again, this is the standard threat intelligence by Nizomi. Um, but then Mandiant's also providing us a lot more sticks indicators. So there's 42 sticks indicators that's again being sent down to those guardians and those CMCs, and we can be able to see each of those indicators in here. Um, if I go in and I click on one of those like here, um, it's going to be blocked. You won't be able to see the actual rule like you can within the Nozomi items, um, but it is in there. It's sending it down to your guardians. So you'll be able to have all of that data um, on those specific guardians. And again, in near real, real time, being able to identify those threats and those alerts and generate alerts for those. So kind of looking over this again, Mandian's helping us with um, some additional aliases, being able to look over different target countries, target industries, being able to have those mapping. But the biggest value is all of those additional indicators um, that Mandian's able to have on top of um, the Nozomi threat intelligence. If we go back and we can look at a couple other items in here of where it could show some value and some data is around the vulnerabilities. So let me remove and clear some of my search here. And I'll grab one and just make the searching a little bit more narrowed down. So if we look at uh, a specific CVE here, um, I'll look at the standard one. We have the CVE, we have the references, we have the risk level, we have any alerts, vulnerabilities, and so forth. Um, we have the risk rate and CBSS score that you'll have there. Again, all of this data is going to be enhanced and we'll be having more inside the threat cards as we have more data coming in around the CVEs. Now, if we look at the same vulnerability with the Mandian add-on, we can see that we got a little Mandian logo. We have the same analysis, which is great, but now we have some more information on what the actual assets are. So we can see that it's targeting Cisco as well as Rockwell, the Stratix ones, of course. Um, we can see the details that we're using and just kind of a, a brief overview and mitigations for it. We can go into the summary and have the breakdown that's coming from Mandian around the specific attack, as well as it links back to one of their blog and research articles. So we'll be able to see that. And the biggest thing that I see is a value coming from Mandian around the vulnerabilities is this workaround. So this is being able to tell you here is a workaround to disable the HTTP um, server for these Cisco or these Stratix switches, right? It's giving you the command for it as well. So you're able to see this workaround and how to implement this. So the more data we're seeing come from Mandiant and being able to add it into it, we're gonna be adding these into the regular workbooks with level of effort and additional items in there that you'll be able to see. But this is a huge value to be able to see um, a workaround and how to mitigate this um, specific vulnerability. Could be a firmware upgrade, could be an OS upgrade, could be a new patch installed. But one of these, which could be a lower effort of just doing a, a no IP HTTP server on your Cisco switches to mitigate this risk 10, that's pretty big. And that's a low effort that you could implement in your environment. We also have some of the, the mapping to be able to see if it was a zero day, the temporal score, um, and if it affects OT. So being able to get this information and again, those references. So around the vulnerabilities, we're still adding more and more um, from Mandiant as well as the um, Nozomi research team to be able to enhance this. But overall, um, Mandiant's able to, to help out quite a bit and be able to provide more content um, around these vulnerabilities that can help with the workarounds. And again, not to take away from what the Nozomi team's doing with the mapping and being able to provide the, the CPE mapping and vulnerabilities, um, but all the additional data that Mandian's able to do as part of their research and historical data, we can certainly add on from day one to be able to help out customers. And if we want to look at, maybe look at maybe one of these search items, if I look for maybe vulnerabilities, 
and manufacturing, we can start to look at any of the, the vulnerabilities that are in manufacturing. So I can be able to see um, some here, some ABB ones. We can see that this one's being enhanced by Mandiant. We have other ones that are strictly just Nozomi. Um, so there, we have enough data, we have all the data on there from Nozomi. And, but if I go ahead and click on this one, that is uh, from 2012 around some ABD, ABB devices. We, again, we can see the summary and workaround. Um, and I'll take a look and see what we have for the Nozomi site as well. So we have on the Nozomi side, we have the CPE mappings, we have the CVEs mapped to it. There's no vulnerabilities or alerts. That's great. We have an analysis done for it already on the Nozomi. We have the risk level. We have the CVSS score, first seen, last seen in the wild. Um, but again, Mandiant's helping us provide some details and some more information. Good thing it's not a zero day. It does affect um, OT and it hasn't been observed in the wild um, coming from Mandiant. But we do have a good... Um, summary for that as well as a workaround um, for turning off that access key um, enable key for these devices so again providing some content for that and then we'll be building these into further workbooks to take some actions on it and if i look at let's just take a look at some malware in the environment to see what the mandate add-on is providing for the malware as well um, oops, if I spell it correctly. So if I go ahead and look for malware, I go ahead and narrow this down. And we can see that Nozomi has quite a few rules already, right? We have a lot of rules that our security research team is doing an amazing job to be able to see the packer rules, your rules, and already 706 indicators and a lot of Sigma rules. But however, Mainit has identified and tracking some additional um, six rules that we can be able to have for this um, Cobalt Strike, which is used throughout the industry um, for attacks. So if we take a look at this, um, we can see some different diff additional industries, target industries. We can see some mapping for the threat actors of what they're using. And again, the MITRE attack framework, but again, it's the additional six indicators that Mandiant's providing. So the Nozomi team has been doing a lot of research on this, has a lot of rules already, um, but Mandiant has identified some additional ones that we can add and just enhance what we're doing today as part of that. So, I will go ahead and kind of open this. So that's kind of a quick demo of visually seeing all of the rules in there. Um, let me go back to some slides and I can kind of show you how you can go through and do some testing if you want to demo it, do some trials. We can kind of go through that. I guess while I'm on here for the Vantage side, if you go into licenses, if you're a Vantage customer, oops, let me grab the correct one. If I go into Vantage, um, if you go into licenses, you will now see Nozomi TI expansion pack powered by Mandiant. You can start a 30 day trial for that to be able to see that. Um, the one thing to keep in mind is um, it does require 24.4, which will be set to release here beginning of October. So over the first week of October, we'll get that out um, because of the new version of N2S needs to support the rules and parsing of all that data. Um, if you wanted to start a trial, you can certainly try it. Um, you can go through, look at the threat intelligence um, in here and be able to see it, uh, but it won't trigger any alerts because it needs 24.4 um, before it can trigger alerts. Um, let me go back to some slides here. Okay, so... Existing Vantage customers, you can do 30 day trial. Um, you can start that. I would recommend waiting till 24.4 here in another week or two so that you can be able to generate some additional alerts if you wanted to. So um, if you do a trial for on-prem or Vantage, how that's gonna work is we are going to send down all the additional content, all of those millions and millions of new indicators down to the guardians. It will trigger alerts. And once the trial period is over, those alerts will stay there. However, the additional content of the, the rules and so forth 
those will be removed. Um, the threat cards, you'll go back to only seeing the standard threat cards. Those alerts will still stay there. You can still see those alerts. Um, however, um, all the content that generated those, like the rules and so forth, those will go ahead and be removed. Um, but you can still do a trial on it. Vantage customers, 30 day trial, generate those alerts, look through the threat cards, on-prem customers, you'll have all of that content sent down to the guardians and have all of those roles to be able to see those. Um, for on-prem customers, um, it is a license that you would have to contact your Nozomi account manager to get that license. So you'll be able to go ahead and implement that on your CMC or on individual guardians. Vantage customers, just a simple click, um, start trial and you'll start your 30-day trial for that. And again, just a reminder for that, is Vantage customers, you'll have threat cards, vulnerability data, and enriched workbooks. Um, and then both Vantage and on-prem customers will get all those millions and millions of indicators sent down to it. Um, how this is kind of packaged is it's gonna be enhanced. It needs the Nozomi threat intelligence because that's the base of it. And then the Mandiant fits onto it. And then we are going ahead and merging all of those rules together. So it needs the Nozomi threat intelligence as well as the Mandiant add-on to be able to, to see all the additional value around the six indicators, um, threat mapping and, and everything like that. I am going to leave it open for questions. I'm sure you guys might have quite a few questions. I haven't been able to look in the chat, but if you guys want to throw them into the chat or if you want to um, go ahead and send us an email, certainly do that and we can go ahead and, and answer those. Uh, Brian, I don't know if you've seen any coming into the chat or into the question panel. Let's see. Sorry, Scott, I'm on mute. No, I have not seen any coming through. Uh, I, see, I, see, I see a couple oh, that no, just came there's, through. There's a couple here, yeah. So um, um, you want to you wanna hit them or you want me to? Yep. So here? what can I ask us in the, the Vantage API? Can, can I do a, an IOC search with the APIs and so forth? Yes, we will be adding it. Day one, we do not have that part of the search. No, we've been really focused on, one, having the Guardians support it, um, being able to... Um, have uh, the threat cards in there that you can do some searches for it. Um, the one thing that's limited is you won't be able to kind of just go through and do a full search and get the whole Mandiant um, rule exported. It's going to be locked down and encrypted. Um, but you can do some ser simple searches here in the future to be able to, to look for maybe industry keywords and so forth with an API and narrow that down based on those threat cards. Um, the the threat cards, we're building the APIs out for those now, which is going to encompass the Mandiant stuff for those. Um, can we pull the all the Mandiant metadata from Nozomi and ingest it into the SOC? Um, this Mandiant data is only for Nozomi product. Um, so how it's working on the back end is we are um, working with Mandiant, getting the APIs daily getting all the data and we're curating it. So we're we're taking all of the additional APIs that we're doing, putting it together. We're also adding it into the databases. So you will not be able to use that um, in the other products. However, you can certainly reach out to the Mandiant team if you wanna use it in other firewalls and so forth, you can certainly reach out to them and be able to, to get that content, um, similar content for that. But Nozomi is taking it, curating it, and adding it into the different databases, as well as making sure that um, the rules that we have, we're not just sending everything down. We're working with Mandiant and being able to identify the critical ones um, so that we're not going to create false positives. So working very closely with Mandiant to understand what are the proper triggers and rules that we should be sending down, ones that anal um, analysts have reviewed ones that are high confidence, and we want to be able to send those down to it. So it's taken a little bit uh, more curation and database work to be able to send that down to all of our customers. Um, why isn't the MITRE ICS used? We do have MITRE ICS for some of those. Um, I'll look. So we have the enterprise, we have ICS, as well as we have mobile MITRE on those inside the threat cards. Um, I may have just selected the wrong one. I didn't look too closely on it. Um, there is an option to switch between enterprise um, ICS and mobile. 
Um, so that is in there. We have um, three of those MITRE mappings for it, as well as Mandian's helping us out with that um, mapping for some of the mobile stuff as well. Um, and then the, the, like I said, for the pricing structure for Mandian, certainly talk to your sales reps um, and go through it. It's an add-on to the Nozomi threat intelligence. If it's Vantage customers, it goes with your tier. If it's um, if it's the Mandian threat intelligence for on-prem customers, it's similar to the threat intelligence. You would have it for each of your appliances that you would have. Um, but certainly reach out to your account managers, work through that and discuss it with them of what the, the best approach is. Um, we will have this um, webinar, I believe, Brian, is going to be online. You guys will have a recording of it. Is that correct, Brian? Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, yeah, so you'll have this live um, as well as if you want to schedule another meeting, do some further in, um, discussion on it, further questions, please reach out to your manager reach, and then they'll reach out to me or the team and we can kind of go through and, and set up a one-on-one a -on -one meeting with you guys and your teams and groups that you guys can go through, test it out, ask some additional questions if you want. Yeah, and, and to find it and to pass it around to others in your organization, just uh, yep. go to nozominetworks.com, search for webinars and you'll find it in here, in here, in there. Yep. Um, so what is the difference between the playbook feature exists on on-prem customers and workbook features available in Vantage? Okay, so playbooks is customizable, right? So let's say if you get an alert um, saying, hey, um, go ahead and look at this asset, contact this team, it's fully customizable to you to understand and build for your SOC or your operators of what to do if an alert is generated. Um, workbooks is more around more around actionable items that you can take. So let me see if I can show you some here. What do we have? So we have workbooks within the product that's looking over actionable items that's saying for these assets, you can upgrade Chrome to the latest version and it's gonna improve your security posture based on the CVEs and the CVSS score. We are right now, this is just based off of CVEs and CVS, CVSS scores and risk and so forth. We are working to add on all of the Mandiant workarounds to be included in this as well. So we have the workbooks that's built into Nozomi and then we have the workaround that's coming from Mandiant. We are going to merge those together for the customers that have the Mandiant add-on. We'll merge those together and have more workbooks that you can take action to so we can group all of those together, be able to identify the assets and the security improvement for those. So playbooks, being able to understand what actions to take and that's customizable that you would build of, here's an alert generated, contact this team and go for it. And that's something you would create. Workbooks is something that is built into the, the Vantage platform and providing areas to help you improve um, security risk as or lower security risk, as well as maybe create action plans for the future on, um, on how to improve your security posture. All right, let's see. And then uh, the TI expansion pack, yes, it will require um, the additional license for, for on-prem customers. So that's gonna be add-on to the Nozomi threat intelligence. And again, please talk to your account managers um, for that. Um, yeah, so um, this customer, or the question was, um, do we have we have guardians that do not have internet connectivity? How do we utilize this feature and um, which license does this fall under? So we have the ability to do offline upgrades. So if you don't have the AWS automatic for on-prem customers that um, that want to have uh, the AWS update it and so forth, you can do that automatically. But obviously you got to have a connectivity to it. If you are an isolated network, um, you can go to the support portal and you'll be able to download those. If you have the Mandian add-on license, you will be able to have a link to the Mandian data that you can download and upgrade the package or the upgrade the TI content package to those specific guardians. So you'll be able to download that and upload those to your specific guardians that are maybe off offline. So um, if you 
do it um, maybe through uh, a jump server. Um, you can be able to do it through that and be able to connect to it. Um, but there is an offline package that you can be able to utilize. Um, are we mapping the ICS minor framework? Yes, we have the ICS enterprise and the, the mobile. And how accurate is the CVID extraction based on the Nozomi passive monitoring? So that one is a big question um, or a long answer I can give you guys in a, probably a whole nother webinar. Um, but very quickly is we have the CPEs that we're doing great work just strictly passive and being able to identify the CPEs, which then turn into CVEs, right? So being able to understand the make, model, and manufacture. That all depends on where you put the sensor and how good of data there is to be able to identify that information. Asset Intelligence um, has had a huge revamp this year. Big improvements for that, um, specifically in Vantage as well as on-prem customers. Vantage has a lot more because of the SaaS power that we're able to do more analytics for it. With that, we're able to classify a lot more of the CP information as well as use our Asset Intelligence database to help classify those make, model, and firmware, which then leads into CPEs which then can help classify CVEs. So I would say it's very good as far as we're growing it. We have a lot of detections. I was just working with a, a customer this last week and we have the full identification for this customer um, around 93% of all their assets in their environment with the make, model, um, and manufacturer. And we're able to get those vulnerabilities in CVEs. But again, it all depends on where you're monitoring the network. Um, if you're very high in the core where you're not getting a lot of the traffic and being able to see that east, west traffic or good information coming from it, then it's a little bit more limited and it takes a little bit more manual work. But if you are monitoring the switches and you're able to get that traffic in there using the asset intelligence database um, and the then you're able to get a lot of the CVs and be able to link those back to it and be able to see all those vulnerabilities and all that data within there, be able to map those back to the threat cards and be able to see which threat cards have alerts for assets or high risk or exploitable. You'll be able to use all of that. But yes, I, I think we can probably do maybe Brian, another webinar in the future talking about asset intelligence and CVEs and CPEs, but it's a, it's a, it's a big topic. Um, but in the nutshell, we do amazing work with the CV, CVE or I would say CPE extraction because that kind of links back to the, the CVEs. So we do a great job with the CPE extraction and linking it back to the CVEs. Um, there is there a um, TTL set on the six indicators that Mandian enriches? I'll have to follow up on that one. I believe we have that. I just don't know where it is set. So I'll have to follow up on that one um, for you on that one. But uh, we do have a lot of data coming from Mandiant. And uh, I think each week we're meeting with Mandiant over the last couple of months and we're finding more and more information um, around the data that we can utilize. So uh, every day within our Within our platform, we're enhancing and enriching what we're doing with Vantage for the Mandiant feeds, parsing the data and bringing that into it. So every day we're adding more and more value into the platform. So it's changing and growing, and you'll be able to see each of those daily when you log in and more data and more content around it, as well as we're working very closely uh, with the customers to be able to get their feedback change some of the UI if it's maybe doesn't make a sense or maybe we can make it easier to view, maybe better overviews. We're working with our customers to be able to do that. And you're, you should be able to see those improvements throughout the platform um, each week that um, you log into the, the Vantage platform as well as the Guardian with those new releases. Um, let's see, Nozomi OT, Threat Intelligence API integration at Cloud Sim Platform and adding TI expansion packs uh, for on-prem will result in duplication or both have different sets. Um, so it won't be duplicated. So I believe the question is, will the Nozomi Threat Intelligence and the Mandiant Threat Intelligence generate duplicate um, alerts? No. 
So we are looking through all the roles of what Mandiant has, as well as what Nozomi has, and we're merging those together. If there's any duplicates, obviously we are not generating duplicate um, rules for those. So we are going through as part of our curation, we are monitoring those, we are looking over it, we're analyzing those and making sure that there are not duplicate indicators for those which will duplicate those alerts. So we have done a lot of work on that one to be able to minimize the, um, the alerts and be able to make sure that they will not be duplicates. And then uh, any plans or roadmap to allow customers to add custom IOCs without any six conversion. Yeah, we, we're going to make it easier to add um, new IOCs. Uh, if it's YAR rules, if it's through the packets or six, we want to be able to make it easier for that. So yes, we are working with our security research team to be able to make that easier and add it into it. One of the things is, yes, you can add it into a, an existing rule, maybe an IP or a domain name or a hash value, add it into an existing rule. That's, that um, is easy to be able to add it into a rule like that. However, we want to be able to, for some of our customers that are creating from a SOC, maybe some new rules or indicators. Um, we have customers that are generating thousands of new indicators specific for their environment of what they're looking for. That's, that's amazing. That's great. Um, and we want to make it easier for those rules because inside the Guardian platform, there's key items that we need to be able to have set to be able to generate the proper alert. So we want to make a platform that's easier to be able to do that. Adding simple stuff like IPs, domain names, and so forth, yes, we'll be able to get that and be able to work on that first. Um, but in the future, we want to be able to have uh, a platform that's easy to generate those rules, be able to have those in there that um, you can put in maybe an IP address, a name, a description, and maybe uh, uh, make or model or maybe a protocol, and it'll say generate a rule, and it can go ahead and generate the rule for you. And you don't have to be an expert at sticks or Yara or packet rule. So we are working to make improvements. We're working with our customers to see how they're using the threat intelligence, how they're using the platform, and what we can do to improve that. So roadmap, yes, we do have in the roadmap. Um, not going to be this year. Um, we'll, we'll see what we can do with having it um, put into the roadmap for, for next year. But that is something our security research team is working on. We want to be able to see when and how we can implement that efficiently for our customers. All right. I think that's all of the, the questions um, I think I hit. Um, Again, thank you for joining. Thank you, Teddy, for, for joining as well from Mandy and Google. If you have any questions, please reach out to your Nozomi account manager um, or go onto the website, ask for a demo, um, and we'll be able to set you up and provide information for you. But uh, thank you for joining, and I appreciate it. And we'll be hearing from you guys soon and talking to you soon in the next webinar. Thank you.